At the end of every week in this course and in this specialization, we will quickly summarize the progress that has been made during that week. My hope is that this can help give a bigger picture overview of all of the topics that you've learned so that you will be able to put them together into the overall um, concept of what's going on. So we will also quickly preview the topics that we plan to study in the following week of material. This week, we began by introducing the primary functions of a battery management system or a BMS. You learned when a BMS is needed and you saw some example applications of battery packs that require a BMS. You also learned some important definitions that we will use when we're talking about cells and batteries and how to design a battery pack from cells wired in series and or in parallel uh, to meet some given requirements. You also learned about how a standard electrochemical battery cell operates, including how it produces a voltage and some internal details of the discharge and charge process. And you learned some overall concept related to how electrochemical battery cells are designed. You saw some considerations that have to be taken into account when we are designing a battery cell. And finally, you saw three examples that brought all of these details together and showed that even though there are many similarities between different types of battery cells, there's also uh, significant distinctions between them that often require that we know something about the internal details of the cells that we wish to manage. Moving on from here, I would like to remind you that the focus of the specialization is on how to implement algorithms or computer methods for battery management for battery packs comprising lithium ion battery cells in particular. And it turns out that lithium ion battery cells work a little differently from the standard electrochemical cells that we have studied this week. They work a little bit more like the nickel metal hydride battery cells that you saw in the final example that we looked at. So next week, we're going to turn our attention to thinking about lithium ion battery cells in particular and studying how they work. Uh, we will ask and answer the question, why should you be interested in lithium ion battery cells instead of, for example, one of the chemistries that you've seen this week? What are the advantages of lithium ion battery cells compared with other types of battery cells? Uh, we will also investigate how their operational mechanism at an internal physical level differs somewhat from those found in the standard electrochemical cells that we focused on in this particular week. You will see what materials are used to build lithium ion battery cells, what materials we use for the current collectors and for the electrodes and the separator and the electrolyte in different varieties of lithium ion cells. And finally, we will consider a very fun thought experiment that's also uh, a very important thing to think about, which has to do with whether the global supply of lithium is sufficient to meet the possible future demand for lithium ion battery cells from electric vehicles and grid storage applications and consumer electronics and things like that.